us on stage is John Maida. Hello. Wow, Yasmin's talk was amazing. I kept taking notes. Um, what is it? You just there is no consensus on an ethical future because there is not one ethic or one future. Wow. Um, I'm sort of absorbing that um, because I'm here. I mean, I don't know if I deserve to be here because there's so many new ideas out there. Uh, and I'm just going to relearn a lot of things that I thought I knew, quite frankly. Um, I, um, most of my mentors are dead. That's not a dark thing. It's true. Um, they're all gone, you know. Not, not to be sad or wistful, but it's, it's a real thing for me. And um, one of my mentors um, died two years ago. He's the one who told me, um, he's, he's, he, was, he was very different, but uh, when I was 42, I was invited to become president of Rhode Island School of Design. And this person, Mitz, his name is Mitz. His name is Mitz Kataoka. He was a professor at the UCLA. He was beloved. He worked with Nam Jun Pak and the Ings and stuff. He was a really interesting person. Um, never recognized for what he did, but he was a behind the scenes change agent. Um, and he was always like a teenager for a reason I can tell you later. A little dark, but, but beautiful in the same way. Um, Mitz called me up and said, John, it's amazing. You've got this big job. It's kind of early, you know that? And I said, yeah, it's a big job, you know. I, I read this book called Audacity of Hope that said, yes, we can. It was 2007. I, I guess I could do it. Um, and, and he said, yeah, you're, wow, this is really early, you know, because, uh, well, you're coming to the end of your second quarter, he said. And I was like, second quarter, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you know, life is lived in four quarters, uh, zero to 25 years of age. 25 to 50 years of age, 50 to 75 years of age, and 75 to 100 years of age. And he said, John, don't forget that most people don't make it to the fourth quarter. So I'm a visual person, so I saw four light bulbs. And I saw that one go poof, go away. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, OK. And he said, you know, in your third quarter, your body begins to, de to deteriorate. Maybe your mind doesn't, but your body does. And so you can't get a lot done. It's like the final run, the final stage. Um, and so I was in my second quarter, and he said, you're coming to the end of it. You better get stuff done, because you're coming to the end of your second quarter. Um, and Mitz made it to the, to the fourth quarter, um, but it wasn't pretty. It wasn't, wasn't easy for him at all. Um, and so just a footnote, um, I'm sort of in that space of like in wonder. Uh, when I was at dinner last night with the speakers and the sponsors, I was like, wow, you're doing such amazing stuff. Um, I don't do amazing stuff anymore. Um, I, I think about um, what can I do in my, in my third quarter? Uh, what can I do that... Um, uh, cause, uh, causes less harm and can possibly uh, open doors in the same way that doors were open for me. But inevitably, you will fail in the process um, because um, uh, the, the, the older you might get, the more people know you. And when you make a gaffe or something, everyone comes after you. And it's quite refreshing. Um, <laughs> I really mean it. It's like, whoa, OK, didn't know that, didn't know that. Oh, interesting. And I, and I don't mean it in a, in a minor, sort of like a dismissive way. Um, as someone who believes in user research uh, profoundly, uh, it's a form of user research um, learning. You know, So um, I want to start off uh, with a few learnings I've had uh, through failure. Uh, and also, um, you know, I see some amazing presentations, right? And so who makes presentations all the time? Raise your hand. OK. So like you have this folder, right? And it gets bigger and bigger. And you mix, and you remix, and you reinvent, and you reinvent. So where I'm at, I've got like a lot of folders. Um, and I'm like, who did this? You know, like what, were, what was I thinking? So I kind of like page through to bring out things that I know that <laughs> when I, even when I made them, I don't know why I did it, and they didn't make sense. But I'll stumble through that in the remaining time together. Does that sound OK as a, 
as a menu. And, and I also can disrupt this at any moment by, um, I, have my, uh, I, have a, I have a phone number here you can call me at, uh, not call me would be pretty disruptive, but um, I have a, you can text me any question you have and um, you know, I don't want to be so, um, um, I don't want to believe that I have the answer to your question by just telling you something. So any moment, just uh, send a text to that message in the, in the upper screen and, 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 I, and I will uh, try to answer it. Um, I can't answer all questions online because I have work, so I apologize if someone asks me a question, but in this time we're together, maybe I can provide value in that process. Okay, so, um, okay, so um, I was recently quoted with saying design doesn't matter uh, in Fast Company. Um, I have to tell you that um, I didn't expect this to happen. Um, <laughs> I didn't plan it to happen. There was no idea in it. Um, I even had like the founder of Frog Design come after me and it was like, this is serious. Um, I also realized the media is really good at crafting, uh, what's it called, clickbait title. So um, when you're pulled out of context, it's amazing. Like when I saw it, I wrote back and I said, oh my gosh, Catherine, this is incredible. This is gonna hurt. Um, <laughs> And then I got an email two days later, oh, we're gonna actually publish a new one. And so um, at the new one, it has this title that says readers respond to John Midas. But if you read it really fast, it looks like John Midas said companies shouldn't blah, 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 blah. So it's just like, what a craft. This isn't, a, this isn't shade, by the way. This is respect for craft. <laughs> um, but in the process, I got to see like how many people are out there and the situations that they're experiencing, which are different from what I might be experiencing. I think a lot of people pointed out that I have a lot of privilege. I have a lot of authority because I earned it in different ways and so I can say what I want to say and I can say the wrong thing. And quite frankly, I can. Um, and I'm cautious of that. Um, at the same time though, you don't know how you're gonna be quoted. So um, in different periods of my life, I've not wanted to talk to the press because I'm not sure, not sure what's gonna happen. Um, but now, as I'm coming into my third quarter, uh, you'll see me making a lot of mistakes, not intentionally, but to try to discover and understand. Um, when I was president of Rollins School Design, you might know that I got a vote of no confidence, and this was actually not the first one. I, I had five moments when I was president of RISD, the city came after me, so, so many things happened to me um, because I arrived in 2008, the era of the global financial crisis. I did read Audacity of Hope 2007. It said, yes, we can. So I said, yeah, I can do that. Got my MBA, I understand organizations, I can do this. And then the global financial crisis happens and that's not in any manual for how to operate. Um, I, also learned, I, learned, I also learned how opinion can change uh, about you when simple stories are crafted. A simple story is a powerful thing. A simple story changes opinion quickly. Um, and in the middle of all this, I did user research. Talk to people, so, so what, what is it? What, well, tell me what, what, what is happening here. And um, someone said to me, well, John, it's really simple. You arrived and you brought the global financial crisis to us. <laughs> and that resulted in laying off some of our friends, dear friends, some serious stuff, and now you must be punished. So it's a very simple plot, a simple narrative, easy to understand, um, and not dismissing at all. It's an example of how, if I understand how people think and how they see things, um, and as, as you all do your own work, um, you're all disruptors in different ways, and um, the beauty of being less known as a disruptor is no one cares. So it's really great, it's the best time. But once people start caring, um, you begin to ask these questions of, how am I being, how am I feeling, how, what are people thinking, um, and you just can't control it. And uh, it's a wonderful thing because in every, in every step of the process, you learn tons about the world, and you learn tons about yourself, and you also learn how you have to change. And so every th instance that I've been in a situation, I realize I have to change. Um, and for anyone, um, Who's ever experienced bad failure? Raise your hand, raise your hand, right, okay, right, yeah. So it happens, right? Um, I have medicine for you. Um, and as long as PBS exists, for the Americans, you know what PBS, but for non-Americans, it's a 
Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a public, it's public media, uh, always under siege. But on PBS.org, there's a, there's a short essay by, written by a person named John W. Gardner called uh, Self Renewal, Personal Renewal. It's super useful. Um, I recommend it to everyone who's failed miserably. Um, I had a friend who was editor-in-chief of an important magazine for 16 years, and I kind of knew him but didn't really know him, but he just called me out of the blue and said, oh my gosh, I've been fired. And I said, well, read this essay. And six hours later, I feel so much better, John. Um, so it's something if you ever stumble, pick it up. It may not be relevant to you at the moment, but I find I read it maybe um, like good months, like once you know, good, in good in good periods, once a month, sometimes once a day. Um, it's like a bone of chicken where I'm trying to like you know eat you know when you have a, for those vegans, sorry, but metaphor is meat, but it's like a little piece of meat you know. It's like ah, oh, I didn't know that meat existed. So um, and seriously, I find it really useful because um, you'll find that as someone who is trying to disrupt and change, um, you're actually an anomaly. You shouldn't do that. It's not normal. Uh, it's actually sort of out, it's outside the curve. So if you choose to do that, you know how like you set up the software and you click the end user license agreement? So you've clicked the end user license agreement so you have a, a different kind of life. Um, but it is a privileged life, it's a good one. Let me check my messages, no one there so far, okay. Um, and if you have questions anytime during the day, uh, I, this expires in 24 hours, so I'll try to get back to you. Um, okay. Um, and again, it is, it, it is like a chicken, uh, sorry for the me meat metaphor, but um, it, it is like this thing that can go to all the time. Um, I guess if your dog is like a chew toy, chew toy. It's like a chew toy. You can keep back going back to it. And uh, this phrase I pulled uh, last night, of course, failures are part of the story too. Everyone fails. Joe Lewis said, everyone has to figure to get beat sometime. The question isn't did you fail, but did you pick yourself up and move on ahead? And there's one other little question. Did you collaborate in your own defeat? A lot of people do, learn not to. I linger on that all the time. So um, any time that I fail, I like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I, I've got myself in that situation. Um, so anyways, perhaps useful to you, Perhaps not useful to everyone because I realize the world is so broad and so different. It might apply to me, it might apply to you, so uh, put that out there. Okay, um, so some questions I have are about the word creative. Ooh, 845, will all these votes of no confidence from others, how do you retain confidence in yourself? Oh, thank you, Erico845. Um, you lose confidence a lot. I think some people that I work with are always surprised with how little confidence I have. Like, why aren't you like showing up and saying, I think it should be this way, pound, pound, pound. Um, I never do that. Uh, some people think I'm pretty wimpy, actually. Um, so like, oh my gosh, and I have some more like, you know, gravitas or whatever. I have to tell you that I've been wrong so many times that of course I'm not sure. Um, I'm not, but in times of crisis, I do switch to sure. If it's a crisis, leaders have to switch to the authoritative mode. You have to direct people to the door. You have to be there, and that's, and that's actually, well, not easy at all. It's, it's a hard thing to do, but when things are ambiguous, um, your confidence is gonna be battered all the time, um, and you're just gonna fail, you're gonna cry, I've cried. Um, it's just not an easy thing. Um, but that's why, you know, as I'm crawling on the floor, I reach for that essay. I try to Google it, find it. <laughs> I really do. It's like, oh, I must get to essay. <laughs> you know, scroll, scroll, scroll. Ah, this part, I, I forgot. Let me read. Let me, shh, you know, whatever kind of thing. So um, uh, it works. Um, and also just knowing, um, just knowing, like, how you feel. Oh, number 626, are you user testing us right now? Uh, no, I'm just trying to provide value. Uh, because I, I may not know what you need or want. Um, so it's, it's more about product, I'm a, I'm a big believer in product management. So yes, I'm user researching to intend to deliver higher value. So thank you. Uh, that's Eric with 626. Okay, the creative. Um, so the creative question is a, is a thing that, I, I'm not sure about the word creative, like someone will say, well, I'm a creative. 
I'm not sure what that means anymore. It's, it's covered, colored with so many things. Um, uh, the reason why I got an MBA is because it was 2001 during the uh, dot-com financial crisis, a CFOE person said to me, um, John, you're a creative person, so don't worry about the money. We'll worry about the money for you. And that person was the fifth person that said that to me, so I got worried about the money, <laughs> um, right? And then I wondered, like, why am I creative, or why is that put me in a different category, right? Um, and I wonder if when we say I'm creative or we're creatives or that's where the creative team sits, I don't know what it means anymore. Um, and for instance, um, uh, when I was at RISD, I would like see so many amazing kinds of fine art. Um, and I loved how there was this bed that was in the exact shape of a person. <laughs> and I used to show this as an example of how artists think. It's like super divergent. It's not what you expect. You know, there isn't a mattress that's sold like that, but an artist would, would normally think of that. That's just, that makes so much, so much sense. Um, and around this time, I had, um, I had some like a uh, thing. I, I had to have a surgery. And um, you know, um, when you get surgery, you know, you, if you're lucky, you, I mean, if it's the stuff, the serious stuff, they, 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 anesthesia, right? So you're like, whoa, you're out, you know? And so you sort of wake up, right? And then I woke up. And the doctor standing over my bed, and he's kind of smiling and saying, you know, when we opened you up, it wasn't what we expected. <laughs> Don't worry, we got creative. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't want you to be creative. <laughs> don't be creative. You know, the CFO come, oh, okay, we got a little creative for you. And like, no, I don't want you to be creative. So I've been wondering about that. Um, you know, so I, I made a chart, creative versus safe, with Becky Vermont, who's now at IDEO. You know, creative is like, surprise! They're like, no, no surprises, better. Um, or like, uh, you know, let's do an experiment. You know, um, experiments are dangerous. They can have some oops moments, so do no harm. So anyways, oh, Eric code 773. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish in this third quarter? How does this vary with your second quarter? Um, I would say in my second quarter, I wasn't aware that I look Asian. I know you're surprised. You're like, what? Let me use a, like a Google camera on you. You don't know that? Well, I didn't really think about it at all. It wasn't a thing for me, you know? Um, uh, and uh, in, my, in my third quarter, I'm, I'm really interested in trying to sort of hit head on a lot of the concerns we have in our world about how people have been left behind in so many narratives and how do we change those narratives, number one. Um, and number two, um, how do we create more balance in the world? Uh, how do we move it more towards an equitable world to create higher quality? Uh, that's the reason that I find so interesting. Uh, looking at Yasmin's career, it's like you've, ch you've covered everything, right? And so every kind of thing you add in, it's like, whoa, new kind of stew. Um, I find that organizations, companies of all sizes are not doing the diligence around including all voices um, at the very top. And it's just stunting growth and opportunity for the world. So for me, that's a concern that I have in my third quarter is with my last remaining years, um, I want to make a dent in there. You can be guaranteed I'm going to be misquoted with different things, maybe for good reason, for people to sort of see things, and for me to also get more awakened by things. But a third quarter is all about realizing, whoa, I have a super privilege because I'm what I call a type O minority. I know. I can go everywhere. I can hang out with people of any background, of any level, of any skin tone, of any, any gender orientation or not, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm like type O blood. I can go anywhere. Um, and because I have that privilege, I wanna use it to connect more dots across. So that's where I'm high centered around. Uh, is it creative? I think so. Is it safe? Definitely safe, but I think the world's safety will probably depend upon this kind of thinking. Um, but it's unsafe because you enter conversations that you're not sure how to deal with. So that's where I'm at. I have 15 seconds left. Um, so 
So uh, in summary, this idea of being T-shaped, you hear it a lot. I think it's really important. I think all of you are super T-shaped. I just want to emphasize that, be proud of it. Be proud that you don't fit anywhere because your role may be the role to unify different communities. Thank you very much. I'm on time.